I met a potential serial killer in his home for work. Two years ago I was working for a company as a person who measures houses. Most people haven't heard of it. It's where you essentially have an iPad, and you go to people's homes and drop floor plans and measure rooms for carpet hardwood flooring projects. Anyone can request one. I'm female and I was 25 at the time, one of the few females that worked this position. I was actually really good at the job, so they gave me a lot of work and I usually hit between 10-14 houses a day driving all over multiple towns. This house was my last house of the day, in the middle of nowhere, and I was exhausted. When I got there, I was incredibly annoyed because the customer wasn't home and was late for his appointment. Ten minutes later he pulls up next to my car. He was a middle-aged man, balding, wearing a normal office job attire with a tie and everything. He seemed a bit awkward but was apologetic and let me into his home. Upon entering the house was unbelievably spotless and organized. Minimal furniture and smelled like cleaning supplies. It didn't strike me as odd at first. He had two cats lounging in the living room. He first started acting weird as I was directed to the first bedroom. He mentioned, wow my cats love you. They don't take to strangers like this usually but his cats literally didn't move or come near me the whole time. I just nodded and smiled while I got to work scaling out the master bedroom on my iPad. He started inquiring about the electronics I was using. Do they keep track of where you are on that thing? Immediate, red flag. Yes, and my boss knows how long each job should take based on the scope of work. It's incredible technology. I lied without missing a beat. He agreed it was amazing. Be careful. Don't touch the gun on the nightstand. It might go off. He chuckled. Talk about immediate spine chill. I looked up from my iPad and sure enough there was a handgun on the nightstand. I knew instantly that I needed to behave like nothing that was happening was triggering alarms for me. He directed me to the second bedroom and he said the exact same thing. Warning me of a gun on the nightstand. That indeed was there. This was the moment I knew I was in danger. At first I thought it was just my anxiety around guns, but at this point, the tension building between us was undeniable. There were only two bedrooms on the scope of work. I hastily met up with him on the kitchen and began running down the next steps. But he interrupted me. Could you measure the basement stairs? I forgot to add them to the list, and I think I might want to carpet them in the future. My heart dropped but my stupid customer service conditioned brain could not figure out how to get away with saying no. He led me to the basement door. And, you guys, there is no way he was planning on doing anything with these stairs. They were plank wooden stairs, L-shaped going down leading to an unfinished basement. Unfortunately, in order to get an accurate measure, I had to walk all the way down them to the basement. Meanwhile, he stood blocking the doorway with a smile on his face, mentioning again about whether or not my boss knew where I was, to which I shortly replied. Yes. Once I got to the basement, I scanned the room quickly. There was not one, but seven deep freezers lining the walls. In the middle of the room was a lit low-hanging ceiling light, revealing an old television set, VHS tape scattered on the floor, and an old recliner facing the TV. Behind the set, two white shelves full of VHS tapes. In this moment, I knew one of two things was going to happen. He was either going to let me go, or he was going to push me down the fucking stairs. I held my breath, put a smile on my face in an attempt to act my way out of this situation, and began to climb the stairs. All I could hear was my heartbeat in my ears. He was still blocking the door, no smile this time. As I got to about the fifth stair from the top, I felt him hesitate, which made me hesitate as well. You could cut the tension with a knife, and I finally understood that expression. To my absolute shock and relief, after four seconds he stepped aside. I made a beeline towards the front door, not saying a word when he stopped me again saying, Oh before you go, won't you give my cats a treat? They loved you so much. He was holding a bag of cat treats. I quickly gave his cats a treat, thanked him and practically ran out of the house, and definitely ran to my car. The second I got out of his driveway I had the most intense panic attack and cried. I tried to call my boss, but I was in a dead zone. The truth of the matter 
is that my boss would not have noticed I was missing for at least 24 hours when I didn't route my day the next workday. Yes, he would have eventually been caught as it was my last known location, but I would have been long dead. I suffered PTSD over this experience. I couldn't sleep for a week. I was petrified to work my job, but had no choice. This day still haunts me. The worst part, I was so fucked up, jumbled, and in denial over the experience, I forgot to write down his address. Edit. Okay, so I thought this was a sub for true accounts? I'm not sure why a lot of people are doubting the story. Here are some additional facts about that day to answer the most common questions I'm getting tired of repeatedly answering in the comments. Once I finally did get a hold of my boss, she mostly laughed off the situation as him being... Nonetheless, she did tell me she would flag him, so that I specifically would not be resent out to his house if there was a need for a re-measure. At the time I felt like that was all there was to be done so I didn't write down the address before it disappeared on my iPad, because I felt I didn't need to, did not really think to. A couple months later, I did try to find the information, because I started feeling like maybe I should inform the police, but no matter who I called, since I was not sure of the exact day, I could not get the info. Additionally, I was working 40 hours a week hitting 10 to 14 houses a day. No way could I look in my ways history to find the address after a couple months. For what it's worth, once I was out of the dead zone I also called my BF and immediately went to his house for comfort. He witnessed the immediate aftermath. All my friends have known this experience and I was encouraged to write it here after a recent conversation about it. Thanks for reading, and thank you to everyone with the kind words of encouragement. I wish I could respond to all of you.